In this problem, we have to find a cubic function of the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, satisfying these conditions. So we have that the relative max is at the point 3 comma 3, the relative min is at 5 comma 1, and the inflection point is at 4 comma 2. Let's go ahead and just carefully work through this. So I haven't done this problem yet, so we're just going to uh, try to figure it out. So the relative max is 3 comma 3. That means if you plug in 3 into this function, you're going to get 3, right? Because this is the x value and this is the y value. So let's go ahead and do that. So f of 3 is equal to a times 3 cubed plus b times 3 squared plus c times 3 plus d and that's equal to 3. That's because the y value is 3. Let's clean this up. Uh, 3 cubed is 27, so this is 27a plus 3 squared is 9, so 9b plus 3c plus d equals 3. And we could do the same thing with the relative min. So if you plug in 5, uh, we should get we should get 1. So f of 5, so it'll be a times 5 cubed, plugging in 5 for all the x's up here, plus b times 5 squared, plus c times 5, plus d. And that's equal to 1, because that's the y value. The y value is 1. Let's rewrite this. 5 cubed is 125. We have 125a. 5 squared is 25, so plus 25b. And then we have plus 5c plus d equals 1. Okay. Now, the inflection point is a point on the graph, so we could plug in 4 and set it equal to 2. However, at this point, we have something that's pretty nice. We have these two equations, and we can subtract them to get rid of the d. So let's go ahead and make that step. Let's go ahead and subtract. So I'm going to take this one down here and subtract this one. So if you do 125a minus 27a, that's going to give you 98a. Then we're going to do 25b minus 9b, that gives you 16b. And then 5c minus 3c gives you 2c. And then d minus d is 0, that was the whole point. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Let me just check that. 125 minus 27 is 98. Boom. 25 minus 9 is 16. 5 minus 3 is 2. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Okay, I'm going to put this in a box because this could be useful. We have an equation with three variables, so uh, let's just keep going. So because we have a maximum at 3 comma 3 and we have a minimum at 5 comma 1, that means that x equals 3 and x equals 5 are critical numbers. So in other words, if we plug these numbers into the derivative, it should be 0. So let's go ahead and find some derivatives here. So f prime of x. So all we have to do is use the power rule because a, b, and c, and d are constants. This will be 3ax squared plus 2bx plus the derivative of cx is just c because the derivative of x is 1. Let's go ahead and find the second derivative because we'll need that to use this condition here. So taking the derivative again, we'll get 6ax plus 2b. And the derivative of c is 0, so we don't bother to, to write it. All right, let's go ahead and use the fact that this is a max and that this is a min. So let's plug in 3 into the first derivative and set it equal to 0. Remember, if you have a maximum uh, at a critical number, at, if you have a maximum, then you have a critical number. So if you have a minimum, then you also have a critical number. So that means that when we plug this number into the derivative, it will be 0. So this is 3a times 3 squared plus 2b times 3 plus c equals 0. This is 9 times 3, so this will be 27a plus 6b plus c equals 0. Oh, this is good, you see, because now we have another equation in a, b, and c. See, now we have two equations with a, b, and c. Let's go ahead and plug in 5. 
so f prime of 5, into the first derivative because, again, we have a min at 5 comma 1, so that implies that 5 is a critical number, which means that 5 is an x value which makes the derivative 0. So we plug it in and set it equal to 0. So 3a times 5 squared plus 2b times 5 plus c equals 0. This will be 25 times 3, so 75a plus 10b plus c equals 0. So now we have three equations um, with, with a, b, and c. So in theory, we can find a, b, and c. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and uh, attempt to, uh, to do that. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start maybe by subtracting these two because that way we can get rid of the c. So let's do, let's do this one minus this one. So that's how we'll do uh, the subtraction. So we'll, we'll subtract the a's first. So 75 minus 27, I'm going to put it in my calculator, I'm not going to be a hero, is 48a. And then 10b minus 6b is 4b. c minus c is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. So we end up with this. Again, 75a minus 27a is 48a. 10b minus 6b is 4b. C minus C is 0, and then 0 minus 0 is 0. So we're here. Now we can actually um, uh, solve this uh, for, uh, I guess, for B, let's say. So we can subtract the 48A. So we get 4B equals negative 48A. Okay. And then so B is equal to negative 12A. So that's a useful uh, relationship. Okay. So we have B equals negative 12a. So now we can take this and plug it into um, the other one here. So let's do that. So we have 98a plus 16 times b, which is negative 12a, plus 2c equals negative 2. So 16 times 12, again, going to use a calculator here, is uh, going to be negative 192. So this is 98a minus 192a, big numbers, plus 2c equals negative 2. And let's do 98 minus 192. It's going to be negative 94. So negative 94a plus 2c equals negative all right. Um, so now we can also take this one and plug it into uh, maybe um, this one. And that will get rid of the B and we'll have just A and C. So let's do that. So we have, set, I'll do it over here on the left, 75A. So we're taking this and plugging it in here. So 75A plus 10 times negative 12A plus C equals 0. So it's 75A minus 120a plus c equals 0. So 75a minus 120a is negative 45a. So we have negative 45a plus c equals 0. I'm going to write it right here below this one so we can do some math so we can solve uh, for these variables. So now maybe we can multiply the second one by 2 or by negative 2 rather so that we can add these and get rid of the a. So multiplying this second one by negative 2, so negative 2 times negative 45 is 90. Negative 2 times c is negative 2c. And negative 2 times 0 is 0. Again, we just multiplied it by negative 2. And now we're going to add these two. Adding these two will give us negative 4a. Right? It's negative 94 plus 90. These c's will cancel. And then this will give us negative 2. Oh, look at that. So a is equal to 1 half. That's really good. We have a now. So we have a, we have b. Oh, we have a. Now we can find b because b is equal to negative 12a. Let me switch colors here. So b is equal to negative 12 times 1 half. So now we know b is equal to negative 6. So b equals negative 6. 
Likewise, we can take this A and we can plug it in here to find C. So we have negative 45 times 1 half plus C equals 0. So that means that C is equal to 45 over 2. Crazy stuff. So the only variable we're missing is D. I'm going to scroll. I think we have an equation with D somewhere up top. Um, uh, we do up here, up here. So 27A plus 9B plus 3C plus D equals 3. I'm going to write that again down here. So it was 27A. Let me see something. Yeah, okay. 27A. And what was the rest of it? Uh, plus 9B plus 3C plus D. So plus 9B plus 3C plus D. So 27, 9, 3... C, D equals 3, equals 3, okay. And we just need to solve for D. So let's be really careful here. So it'll be 27 times 1 half plus 9 times negative 6 plus 3 times 45 over 2, crazy problem, plus D, which we're trying to find, equals 3. I'm just going to use a calculator here, so uh, just to make it a little bit easier, 27 over 2 plus 9 times negative 6, plus 3 times 45 over 2. I got 27. Wow, what a nice answer. That, that's just amazing. That makes me feel like this is 100% correct. <laughs> so 27 plus D equals 3. That implies that D is negative 24. So we finished. Notice we never even used um, the second condition. I don't know uh, why they gave it to us. Maybe it would have made it easier. Uh, we could have used it, but we just decided not to. Actually, it would have made it easier. We could have used it uh, because because this is an inflection point. That means if you plug in 4 here, that this is equal to 0. So it would have been easier to use this. Uh, and that way, we could have just used this to get this right away. So we could have skipped all of this. We worked a little bit harder than we needed to. Anyways, the original question wanted f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And so now we just plug everything in. So the answer would be f of x equals, so a we said was um, 1 half. So it's 1 half x cubed. And then b is negative 6. So minus 6x six squared plus 45 halves, that's your cx, minus 24. So handwriting is a bit sloppy, but that should be the final answer. And again, we could have taken uh, a shortcut by um, by just plugging in the 4 here, right, and setting it equal to 0 into the second derivative because that's an inflection point. So the second derivative there uh, is is 0, is 0. In fact, just to show you, let me just let me just convince you that it's true. If you were to do that, if you were to plug in 4 here, you would get 6a times 4 plus 2b, and that's equal to 0. Remember, uh, inflection points are points on the graph where the concavity changes. So positive, second derivative, it's concave up. Negative, second derivative, it's concave down. Second derivative equal to zero, um, that's a possible place where the concavity will change. We know it changes here because it's an inflection point. So look at this. This is 24a plus 2b equals zero. So that means that um, 2b is equal to negative 24a. So b is negative 12a. So this would have been much faster than all of this that we did here. So either way works. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.